Hey, welcome back. Jason here with Unity3D.College. Today we're going to continue on the third person shooter series and we're going to add in some mouse controls. Now where we left off, I'm going to hit play, we could run around and shoot, we could aggro a character and even kill him. Right. So if I get up close, he should start coming in. And if I click enough times, enough shots get fired off and he dies. So let's get this set up. What we're going to do is change out our VCAM just a little bit and then add a custom camera controller script to it. Before we start coding though, I want to change our look at target. Right now we're looking at the head. So if we click right here, you'll see that we're looking at the character's head. That's where that red line is going to when once we actually start playing. And we want to change this so that it's always looking at the player instead. To do that, I'm going to take the player and just drop that right into the look at target. And then I'm going to adjust the offset right here, this tracked object offset Y value. I'm going to go to the game view though and just grab the Y and drag it up until it's right about the height I want. I want it kind of just over the player's shoulder. So I'm going to get it just over their head actually, just a little. And then I'm going to adjust the follow offset to 1 and the tracked object offset to 1. So that way I'm right over in this shoulder area. Of course you could pull this in or out, adjust it however you like, but this just seemed like a good spot to use. Now when we hit play, I want you to see what happens when I adjust the Y value here. So I'm just going to grab the Y, drag it up, and you see we look up, and if I drag it down, you see we look down. So there we go. We've got nice, easy up and down movement, and remember we can still turn with the keyboard. So let's stop playing and let's create our camera controller script. So I'm in the scripts folder, we'll create a C sharp script, name it camera controller, and we'll open that up. And I'm going to get rid of these comments. I don't need them. And clean up my formatting with Control K, Control D. Then I'll mark start private explicitly. Again, doesn't make a difference, but I like to do it just because it feels a little cleaner to me. And then we need to get a reference to the um, the value that we want to change, and that's this aim right here. So we're going to want to change that Y value of the aim. Oh, collapse down automatically after build. Okay, now it doesn't want to expand. Whatever, we want to change that value. So to get the object that we need to adjust, we're, it's the composer. We're going to say composer equals, and then we need to get component, and we need to get the virtual camera first. So I'm going to do cinemachine dot, and just type in virtual, or VIR. There we go, we want this virtual camera right here. And then we need to get a cinemachine component from that virtual camera. So I do get cinemachine component, and here we'll do cinemachine dot, and I want the composer, so just start typing compose, and that's the one. I'll add the parentheses and semicolon. Now I hit control period and generate that field. And when I generated the field, since cinemachine composer is in the cinemachine namespace, the using statement was already automatically added, so I can just delete these right here and clean that up just a little bit. So now we're getting the composer in start, and we just need to update it in update. Again, I'm going to explicitly mark update as private. Doesn't make a difference, but something I like to do. And then we need to read our mouse input. So I'm going to say float vertical equals input dot get access. And we're going to use mouse Y. And I want to multiply this by a sensitivity value so that we can adjust it at runtime. So I'm going to say times sensitivity. And then we'll generate a field for that. Add the serialized field attribute so it shows up in the inspector and give it a nice default value of one. Uh, I'm also going to move this up above. So I like to have my serialized fields right at the top. Just keep it nice and standardized. So now what we can do is say composer dot y or no not dot y dot m look let's no it's a tracked object offset get that mixed up all the time. So we need to get the tracked object offset and set the Y value of that. And we're not actually going to set it, we're going to say Y plus equals vertical. So this will allow us to just adjust that offset by moving the mouse up and down. Now I'm going to go back over here and hit play. I'm going to show you one issue that we're going to run into with this that we need to adjust with one more line of code. Um, I haven't actually added the script, so let's just add that now at runtime. I just got to remember to add it again. We go, camera controller is added. And now if I move the mouse up, I look up. If I move it down, I look down. But I want you to look at the tracked object offset Y value right there. If I move it up and I just keep moving up, see the value just keeps going higher and higher. Now I'm back on the screen and I'm dragging down and 
you can't see it, but I'm actually having to drag down a whole bunch just to get it back up. And it's not really locked in. So we can fix this with a simple clamp statement. But before we do, I'm going to add the camera controller to this camera so I don't forget when we jump back in. There we go. It's added, and we'll just double click it, go back in here. And we're going to say composer.mtractobjectoffset.y equals mathf.clamp. And then we give it the original value. So here, let's just copy that. And then we can give it a minimum and a maximum value. And this is just going to make it so that the value is either the current value or the min or the max, depending on if we go below the minimum or above the maximum. So if we have, here, let's put in a negative 10 and a positive 10 for these two values. And then if our Y ever gets to greater than 10, it's gonna clamp at 10. If it gets lower than negative 10, it'll clamp at negative 10. So I'm gonna save that, remove those using statements and that extra space at the end. Jump back over and hit play, and let's see if we can look up and down with it nice and clamped. And again, if you want to clamp this even further, you could so that the player can't look all the way down. You could figure out, like, I mean, really, is that about a value of four or three right there? No, oh, it's a five, yeah. So a value of five would get you looking up there. 10 just goes all the way up and all the way down. Relatively smooth. Okay, so we're good with up and down, and we can, again, use the keyboard to look left and right, but I really want to be able to move my mouse around and aim. So we need to add in some rotation based off of the mouse. To do that, we're gonna make a super simple change. We're we'll just going to the player movement script, and if you remember here, we're getting our horizontal axis, and then we're rotating based on that horizontal axis. We can actually change this to just be mouse X and save, and then jump back over here and hit play. And now that it's done compiling, now I can use the mouse to look around, to aim, and uh, my mouse cursor is still kind of going off the screen, so it gets a little bit hard, but it's generally working. It feels pretty smooth, pretty quick. Um, so let's say I want to get the mouse to not do this stuff, though, so that I can actually click over here or move the mouse far enough to the left or the right and have it stay centered and you know, basically lose the mouse cursor. So to do that, super, super simple. We'll just open up the player movement script and we'll put it in here temporarily. I'd recommend um, perhaps adding another script that does this or adding a toggle option for this, but it's like, it's a one liner, so it's pretty simple. We'll say cursor dot lock state equals, and then we have cursor lock mode enum, and there are three different options. There's confined, just locks it into the game window. There's locked, which is what we're going to use, and that's basically making the mouse cursor disappear and centering it in the middle of the scene all the time. And then there's none, that's what we're on by default. So I'm going to set it to locked right here. And when I do that and hit play, now you'll see that the mouse cursor is just going to disappear and go as far left or right or whatever I want and still aim and click and not be clicked out of my game. There we go. And run over here, keep shooting him. And yeah. We're good. So if I want to get the mouse out of here, by the way, just hit Alt Tab, and then you can get it kicked back out. But again, that's why I recommend putting in a script with a toggle option so you can just lock the mouse in or maybe just to lock it by default and have a hotkey that unlocks the mouse. And going forward on this series, I'm going to continue to do smaller size chunks like this and try to keep it a little bit more regular. Again, if you have requests for specific functionality, just drop a comment below. I'm also going to put all of the source available for this online, so you can just download it and grab it, pull it in. I cannot put the art in there, though. You'll have to grab that yourself and kind of put everything together, but I think you can at least check against the source and make sure that there are no problems. Also, if you're interested in uh, more in-depth training, I do have a course on this stuff where we go basically from the start to building out a full first-person, third-person shooter style game. We do a lot of this stuff, but in a whole lot more detail, many hours of content a day. Um, and I'll put a link to that down below too. You can check it out if you're interested. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and share. It really does help. Um, and have a great day. Keep coding.